Assalamu alaikum boys and girls. Good morning. I hope you people are all safe and sound wherever you are. Now we are going to do a biology session. So let's hope we can get through this. The last chapter that we were talking about was the human respiratory system. And let's focus on that so that whatever questions are there, you can tackle the questions properly. All right. So let's begin off. Uh, the human respiratory system before we move on with the respiratory system let's talk about a little what is breathing and what is respiration now breathing is a mechanical process where nothing is getting converted to something or other so it's basically you take in air and you give out air while respiration is a process where glucose is broken down in the presence or absence of oxygen to give you energy as a byproduct carbon dioxide is also produced now let's focus on the components of the human respiratory system the human respiratory system basically consists of the lungs there are two lungs the larynx trachea and any other structure that support or protect the respiratory system all right so let's take a look at the diagram now if you take a look at the diagram first of all now in your book you might see that larynx has been uh, designated as wind box but I want you to go through the scientific name and please do not use the common name in your exam papers or anywhere that you are sitting for a test or so. Now, so larynx is basically the wind box. It consists of cords which produce the voice. So voice is produced in your larynx. So let's note that down what is happening over here. So in the larynx voice is produced. Now. How is the voice produced? Let's have a look. So every time air flows through, whenever we are breathing or talking, we are opening our mouths, that's when air is passing through your larynx. And these cords vibrate a bit. That is how your voice is produced. Meaning if somebody's cords are not functioning properly, that person is going to have some kind of impairment in talking. All right, moving on. So larynx leads the air into a tube-like structure known as the trachea. This has been commonly written down in your book as windpipe, I, but I want you to write down trachea. Now, trachea is lined with soft bones known as rings of gristle. The trachea is a very thin structure made up of only one layer of cells. So every time you take in air and you give out air, there is a fair possibility that the trachea might collapse or the esophagus lies very near to the trachea so every time you are gulping something you are eating food and swallowing it might press against the trachea in order to prevent that these rings of gristle keep the trachea open all right so that's your sec one point that what is protecting the trachea so the trachea is protected by the rings of gristles now moving on trachea leads air down into two branches known as the bronchus so if you talk about just one branch, it is known as bronchus. If you talk about both of them, then it is known as a bronchi. All right. So plural is bronchi and singular is bronchus. Each bronchus enters each lung. So one will be entering into one lung and then they further branch off into minute branches known as the bronchiole. Each bronchiole terminates meaning it ends in a sac like structure known as the alveolus so if you talk about just one air sac then we are going to call it alveolus if we talk about all of them or more than one then we are going to designate it as alveoli all right now let's look take a look at the other structures that are protecting this respiratory system now somewhere at the center you have the heart located we're not concerned about the cardiac cycle or the circulatory cycle so i'm not going to draw or discuss the functions of the heart here so let's focus on only the respiratory system now the respiratory system meaning the lungs are contained in the upper part of your body known as the thorax so our body has been divided into two parts by the diaphragm so this dome shaped muscle is known as the diaphragm diaphragm divides part of your body your body into two halves the upper half is known as thorax while the lower half is known as abdomen 
all right okay now so in the thorax the rib bones form a cage like structure so they form a cage like structure like this in which your respiratory system is tightly protected all right now there are muscles known as intercostal muscle so when you had the rib bones emerging out like this in between every rib bone there is a ring of muscle known as the intercostal muscle these intercostal muscle contract when you breathe in pulling up your rib bones outwards and upwards while as you breathe out that's when your intercostal muscles relax all right so those are these structures now as far as the supporting structures are concerned you need to be concerned about the intercostal muscle the rib bones the rib bones are protecting and supporting the respiratory system and as far as the protection is concerned so for your level just in class 6 we are going to learn about only one thing which is the ring of gristle these ring of gristles they are c shaped cartilages so they look exactly c like this half c so these c's alternate they are arranged in an alternate manner and that's how they keep the trachea open all right now let's take a look at just one alveolus so we're going to take one alveolus enlarge it and see what is basically happening at the alveolus now over here i have drawn one alveolus and a blood capillary there are many blood capillaries surrounding each so there will be crisscross of cap blood capillaries going all over the place but just for our simplicity we have taken one blood capillary all right so let's see what's happening now in the blood capillary there are different types of blood cells predominantly red blood cells that's what we are concerned about so every time you take in air air is full of oxygen which is entering into the alveolus filling it up and every time you breathe out carbon dioxide is let out all right let's see how this thing is basically happening so when so this arrow is showing the direction in which blood is being carried around the alveolus so as you can see that blood is very slowly passing through the surface of the alveolus now red blood cells carry oxygen and they carry it to the body tissues but let's see how where are they picking it up from now in our body cells we already know that respiration is taking place as a result of which huge amount of carbon dioxide is being produced now this carbon dioxide is highly poisonous for the body so it has to be given out of the body and the only way that you can do so is by breathing out all right so when this blood is being carried towards the alveolus carbon dioxide diffuse out i'm using the word diffusion so please remember the only process by this by, by which this exchange is taking place is actually diffusion and no other transport system all right now so carbon dioxide will first diffuse diffuse out of the plasma into the space and finally into the alveolus and then when you breathe out carbon dioxide is going to be let out from your lungs now similarly when you breathe in and simultaneously as this exchange is taking place oxygen is going to diffuse out of the alveolus into the space into the plasma and then into the red blood cells now why specifically in the red blood cells because red blood cells carry a red pigment known as hemoglobin so let's put that point down so red blood cells carry hemoglobin now no other cell of the body carry hemoglobin hemoglobin is the only pigment which is able to bind to oxygen and carry it to the body tissues all right so the process by which this exchange of gases is taking place in the alveolus is known as gases exchange and gases exchange occur by diffusion all right now i'm specifically using the word diffusion please do not make a mistake and don't write active transport or osmosis it is only by diffusion so that is that now that kind of takes care of the respiratory system now let me rub it off and moving uh, let me move on to the uh, final revision part that i want you to focus on a very quick revision point 
first of all diagrams now whatever diagrams you have done so the human digestive system I want you to learn how to draw and label the human digestive system properly, accurately. Now one more thing about labeling. Please take a look at the diagram that I have labeled. If you have noticed, I have drawn all straight lines and there is no something like this or like this. All right. No labeling should be done with pen or if I have asked you to draw something, all the diagrams need to be in pencil, labelings need to be clear, no smudging, no double writing, make sure your diagram is very much clean and neat so that I can mark it properly. Now moving on, so diagrams, digestive system, learn how to draw and label it properly, go through the functions of each part, for example in the mouth mastication is taking place, in the stomach digestion of protein, in the small intestine you have absorption of food, body cells, assimilation, so I want you to make a spider diagram, for example, if I were talking about the digestive system, uh, let me give you a very quick example, so if I want to know where is everything taking place, so assimilation. Where does assimilation take place? Body cells. Now, where does mastication take place? In the mouth. Alright, where does digestion of protein take place? In the stomach. Alright. This is how I want you to go through the revision work. So study all the chapters properly and then do the revision like this so that all the points are fresh in your mind. Moving on with the next diagram, respiratory system. Then you have the nitrogen and carbon cycle. Make sure you learn the diagrams of the cycles properly. Now, I may not give you the exact diagram which is there on your book because uh, I will be taking the question from somewhere else. But that doesn't necessarily mean that the points are changed or the steps are changed. The steps are going to be exactly the same. I want you to pay close attention to what the diagrams are basically telling you and what the diagrams are asking you. For example, if we talk about nitrogen cycle, I might ask you what is the function or what is the role of the denitrifying bacteria uh, in the nitrogen cycle. Now, what is the denitrifying bacteria doing? It's basically decomposing and converting ammonia and nitrate back into gaseous nitrogen and releasing it into the air. That's what its function is. So I want you to focus your answers like this, all right? Okay, so nitrogen, carbon cycles, focus on the diagrams, all these steps. If you want, you can make signposts and write small points on your book. Fair enough, as long as you are learning it properly. Now, the next diagram, lichen. Do we remember what a lichen is? Lichen is an association between algae and fungi, remember? So from here, I might give you a diagram, I might ask you to label it and then explain what is basically happening. What type of association is this? Is it symbiotic? Is it parasitic? Is it uh, saprotrophic? What is it? Then I might ask you what is the function or how is the, what is the algae getting out of this association or what is the fungi getting out of this association. So I want you to learn every step properly. Alright, no need to memorize, I don't want you to memorize ever but I want you to remember what is basically happening in all these steps, alright. Okay, lichen and then uh, food chain and food web, food chain and food web. Now in case of food chain and food web, there is actually no diagram to memorize or learn how to label because randomly I might give you anything, I might give you a flow chart. So what I want you to pay attention is this direction of the arrow. I hope you remember the direction of the arrow is basically denoting from where energy is transferring to whom. So this direction of the arrow is basically telling you the uh, direction of flow of energy and I hope you get the direction correct all right now you might give uh, the cow is been eaten by the tiger uh, the tiger is being decomposed by the bacteria all the orders might be right but then this direction of the arrow is wrong that's where you're going to lose mark so please pay attention no need to hurry pay close attention okay so that's that moving on with definitions Now, as far as definitions are concerned, I want you to go through each and every definition. So, let me just write all the definitions. So, 
So that includes habitat, ecosystem, uh, environment, um, what all do we have? Uh, denitrifying bacteria, nitrifying bacteria, then uh, what is digestion, why do we need to digest? So all of these definitions have to be learned. All these definitions are worth two marks. Now the point of me telling you the mark is each one of them will carry two marks. So I need to see at least two valid points in your definition. So for example, if you are telling me digestion is, uh, digestion is a process by which food are being digested you're basically giving me the question back you're not answering anything so that will give you a zero so i want you to read the questions properly and then start answering no need to panic all right okay so definitions done uh we, we talked about okay number three concepts concepts such as what is the whole point of digestion why are we digesting food why are we digesting food because food is large and insoluble so you need to convert it into something smaller and something soluble which can be taken up by your bloodstream then roles of different bacteria in the nitrogen and carbon cycles so roles of different organisms in nitrogen and carbon cycle all right then um, symbiosis commensalism parasite so host parasite relationship Okay, now let me elaborate on the third point. So, symbiosis, it's a close association between two organisms where both are being benefited, all right? Now, so both are helping each other, maybe one by giving habitat, the other by giving glucose. For example, in case of lichen, you have already seen that. Now, besides lichen, I also want you to go through the other types of uh, symbiotic relationships that we have talked about. For example, symbiotic digesters. Who are the symbiotic digesters? Remember the bird in the crocodile's mouth? Then you have symbiotic cleaners. So I want you to go through all of those examples. Next, commensalism. What is commensalism? It's a close association between uh, more uh, two or more organisms where only one is benefited while the other is neither benefited nor harmed. Go through the example. Uh, these definitions and concepts value nothing without examples. So I want you to go through the example. Now host parasite, you have a complete chapter on this. So I want you to go through each and every name. For example, scabies, what is it doing? Mosquitoes, uh, where would you expect to find them? Um, then lice, where would you expect to find them? So I want you to go through each and every name of those parasites, how they are affecting, what they are doing to the host and who the host is. All right. Okay. So that kind of takes care of uh, a brief revision of what we have done and what you can expect to be in your question paper. Now, a quick advice, when you get the question paper, please read the questions very quickly within something around two minutes. And then if you have a problem, you can always call for us. Before uh, now, um, please don't have the mentality of reading one question at a time and then going for the teacher. So read all the questions quickly, thoroughly and then if you have a confusion, ask for the teacher. Now, meanwhile, go through all the revision work, whatever you have done so far, go through the chapters of the book, read the books thoroughly, all the chapters, and then if you have any confusion, I'm always there, you can always call me up for any kind of confusion you have. All right, now guys, please stay safe and best of luck.